Hi, it's Theo Stocker for Yachting Monthly and I'm at the Southampton Boat Show and I was wandering around and I have found this wonderful little boat. This is uh, the Big Sea and this is Andrew Bedwell's little boat. She's possibly the smallest yacht you'll ever come across. She's three foot, three inches long, so just over one metre and he is planning to set the record for sailing across the Atlantic and his route will take him from Newfoundland to Falmouth in England, hopefully. Let's have a look around and he can uh, show us quite how this bonkers little boat really works. So my name's uh, Andrew Bedwell and my boat's uh, Big Sea. So um, what I've always wanted to do and I've always done is chat lots of challenges. I've taken small boats, um, not at this small, but quite small, up into the Arctic, in, towards Greenland, Denmark, straight back to the UK solo. Um, and so what I've now done is I've decided to do this, probably the biggest challenge, but being the smallest one. So the Atlantic is a huge challenge, and in the smallest vessel, just to push it that little bit harder. So that's what we've done. We've built it, designed it, designed it, built it, and now it's um, ready. It's been sea trialled, and we, we're getting out in the water again soon. Right, so she's just over a metre long. So the current world record is 1.63 metres, and what we've decided to do is to really beat that record and go for it. So this is just over a metre, so we are losing about 50, 60 centimetres off the boat length of the boat. Um, obviously, um, beforehand records have been done and they've gone in half inch increments. So this will actually do it by half a metre. No point messing about. Best of British, let's do it properly. And um, so, yeah, so that's what we've done. It's shorter, just over a metre to break that record. At the moment, she's about 450 um, kilos, but we're just moving some weight around. Um, so we've got another keel going on the bottom just to take it the weight further forward and to just give it a fraction more draft. It's only about 10 centimetres more draft. OK, so what we've got is um, obviously the boat's set up for downwind. So we've got um, twin furling head sails. So both, um, everything's reefable from inside and furlable from inside. The two sheets, again, run back through to inside. What we've got is we've got the two outriggers that can be in storms, hiked up and put against the, um, the main mast. Um, we've got these um, uh, derades, so they're actually rotatable. These aren't the finished ones, but what they've got is kind of a butterfly flap, so if a wave smacks it, hits them, which it will do, smacks them open, I'm closed. So then inside I can manually open and close them. So I've got two, one to turn into the wind, one to turn away from the wind to um, basically get the air through the canopy and through the boat, so. On the bow, we've got a sea anchor that we can deploy because obviously we will not be going upwind. It's yeah. all downwind, so anything uh, non-favourable winds will just sit out onto the sea anchor. Obviously, as you can see, we've got a compass. Uh, it's very, very limited use, but it's, it's there. We've got it. Um, so the whole vessel is um, fibreglass, Airex core, and then fibreglass, so it is absolutely solid. Um, and it is primarily our life raft, life raft as well. So literally everything can be pulled off the vessel and it will still stay intact and afloat. What we've got is we've got um, an eight mil plexiglass dome on there. Obviously radius to any waves hit it to actually spread the load on it. Um, then what we've got is probably the bit that most people ask about is the food. So that is basically, it's almost called pemmican which has been used by um, Arctic explorers going back to Ammon certain times and all that. So, so it's basically beef dripping, um, beef and then raisins. And uh, it's uh, then going to have aspirin in it to thin my blood, um, uh, ascorbic acid, I think that's the right way of saying it, um, to stop scurvy and things like that, and a whole host of other medicines in there just to keep myself healthy when I'm in there. So, um, yeah, and we've got... That's half a day, or just fractionally over half a day's rations. So there. how many of those are you taking? Uh, 150. 48 kilos worth of those. So, and obviously, with a vessel this small, what we're doing is, as we're going to be eating those, they're relatively heavy, each one, so we'll be replacing that with water. So what we're working on now is a little bag similar to this bag that will actually eat the food, replace it with water, fresh water we'll be doing it with, so it is there as well and then storing it back into the boat um, just to keep the, boy to the weight up because obviously we can't go, we can't make a 48 kilos lighter. So, yeah. And obviously I'm going to be losing weight as well. Not, not that much, hopefully. <laughs> Most boats steer with the rudder um, or adjustment of angle outboards and things. So what this is, we've got 
twin rudders on it, but the main thing that they've got is they don't actually steer the vessel that much. They've got a kind of a spade on the back of them, and there is a name, and apologies, I can't remember the name of it. So what that does is that creates loads of drag, and all it's doing is actually balancing out the boat. So what it's doing is it's creating drag back here to make it so that the boat is. We initially had it so that um, in the design there's a little hole there that we thought we were going to have to put a rudder internally. Sea trials and things like that, testing, it made so little difference to have them kind of 30 degrees off. So what we've done is we found that sail trim now has more authority than the rudders. So that's the way we're sticking with it. Makes it a lot easier in some respects for us, um, which is obviously we're trying to make it as easy as possible to sail. Well, it's like a TARDIS inside. You get in there and there isn't the extra room that you'd associate with the TARDIS. So, great. Okay, so, that's where I'll be standing. So on the good days, I'll be able to do my exercises. I've got a little hammock here that I can pull tight and then I can actually lay in there so I can put my feet out. Obviously, it's really important to be able to stretch your body out. But most of the time, I should be actually stuck down inside the boat. And what I can do is quite comfortably just And by adjusting the sheet trim, I can actually make the boat steer far better than by using the rudders. So just by sheeting in the port, the port um, sail, releasing the starboard sail, she'll go round to, um, to starboard on there. Right, if I come up behind you, I yep. if I can sort of peer down inside and see, yep. what, see what's going on in here. Yep. Right, so what have we got going on inside the boat? Okay, so what I've got is port sheet, a starboard sheet. So just release those, pull the furling line. To furl, then what we've got is we've got um, port holes here, and we've what we've got, sorry, we've got storage lockers there. So we've got food provisions in there. We've got food provisions here. Obviously, all of these are completely separate as well. So there's eight separate compartments internally. Then we've got the same on the port side as well. What we've also got is this big bow area here, which we're going to have all the um, chart plotters. We're going to have a class B transponder, um, an AIS receiver I'm standalone. Oh, and uh, and uh, um, <laughs> that's a very good question. How do you go to the toilet? Um, so what we would do is. In perfect conditions, we'll go over the side. Obviously, when the conditions aren't good enough, um, I am going to have to have a, a kind of a nappy. It's not ideal. Um, but the thing with it is when the conditions are so bad, then we won't be able to eat quite so much food, so you won't be going. We'll still be um, creating water. So down by my right-hand side, I've got a, um, a water pump there. So I've got a complete desalinator, so I can just literally pump my fresh water straight through. Um, and that will be going into a bag, and that's going to be with um, a company called Revive Active. What they're doing is they're supplying me with a load of sachets to put in to make it so that it's good for my joints and things. And then what I've got in the back here, I have my lumbar bar support, which is a spare sail. I have got a float pad. I will have a slightly more padded floor, but then I can, on good conditions, just lay in the bottom like that. Obviously, you're not going to be like that very often, but yet you can still be down there. And then also, the last thing internally, there's a full harness so that I can actually, um, in inclement weather, I can just close the hatch, put the harness on, and then I'm just locked into the boat. And that just literally sits you there, and then your head's in the dome. So what we've got is we've got a padded hat that I should be wearing with a special foam in it so that my head's not just going to slam around in the um, in the dome. Right so yeah so to close the hatch all I have literally got to do is close it down, pull it in and there we are we're um, locked in there. The arms sit in here so I can actually brace myself solidly and then obviously normally um, we'd have the the harness on as well so I can completely lock myself in here. Um, legs are braced so that I cannot literally move around at all. Um, obviously it gets very hot in here but what we've got is we're doing the northern route to try and um, help with the heat um, but also we've got the derades at the front which I can manually rotate from just under where my knees are 
um, and open and close them. So, yeah, and then on nice days when it's better, I can just open it up and uh, yeah, then I'm uh, ready to go. Yeah. Right, so we're going to try a little bit of this, uh, what are we calling it, pemmican? Pemmican is what pemmican. it is. So there I go, you might as well I'll take the big bit, you'll call it. No, I'll, I'll try a small yeah. bit to start with. So, beef dripping, beef, and then um, raisins in it as well. Yeah, it's a bit like um, fruity biltong, isn't it? There you go. I think that's probably the kindest description I can give it. Yeah, so what we've got is, and we've got another one as well. This one for special occasions. This one is for special occasions. Slightly different, um, like, oh, sorry, it's very crumbly as well. Mm. So what this one is, is this is what's probably going to be more so used. Um, it's actually got a slightly higher fat content in it, mm -hmm. but it's got dried beef, dried peppers, and the fat. Hmm. I mean, it's edible. 90 days in, you might be a little bit tired of that. I like that one. Are you getting, now it's giving you the second kind of boost of flavour. Yeah. Are you getting a? Um, are you going to take any chocolate or any any treats? Not really. My daughter has said she's going to put some skittles in there somewhere. Okay. I don't know where. And then you'll discover them. I would. Place. Is it like my? Li I turned up this morning. Oh, yesterday yeah. morning. I realised that my daughter had drawn a load of drawings in there of me, our dog, and yeah. everything. Um, I had to phone and just tell her, you do realise I haven't gone yet. You yeah. Know what I'm saying? <laughs> but no, she does realise. So yeah. And, she's... and how do your family feel about you doing this? Um. They all know I'm a little bit kind of crackers anyway. So people said that I wouldn't be able to take the Mini up into the Arctic and past ground Greenland and Denmark straight things. But we did it. So when the weather gets inclement at home, I'm found up in the Lake District, maybe dug a snow hole and out in the snow for the night. Um, same with my daughter. She, we both go out, we summit camp and sleep in bivy bags on the top of mountains and things. So it's just the way I've always been. So yeah. yeah. They, they know, they kind of knew that something like this would be coming. So you anyway. feel like psychologically you've got what it takes to go in a, a three foot, what is it, three foot nine? No, 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 not three foot nine, you're giving me too much, too much length. Oh, three yeah, foot, no, three, it's about three foot three, about that. Three foot three, sorry. Um, it's actually, okay. yeah, so, um, but um, yeah, it, that's going to be the big one. Obviously the brain is m really mentally active. So what we're doing is we are going to put an e-reader in there. Um, and there's going to be a little solar panel here that is just dedicated to the e-reader. So I know that... When I've run out of power on that, that's it. I, cause it's very easy when your brain gets um, uh, tired, down, negative about things, to just think, oh, I'll just carry on using my main power and things, which obviously I can't do, which would lose, give me huge safety issues. Yeah. So um, I'm just going to be utilising the power that I've got um, on the boat um, okay. on its, yeah. its own little panel, power, power pack. Andrew, thanks for showing us around your that's boat. Right. It's uh, amazing to see such a, a wonderful bonkers contraption <laughs> and uh yeah i wish you all the best for your voyage Thank and you. um yeah keep us in touch with how well, you get on it's kind of best of british isn't it we yeah. want to bring the record back to the uk so it's currently in america yeah. let's bring it back to the uk and anyone fancies doing it something smaller fair and if play people to want to come and see you arrive where, where and when should they go <laughs> do you think hopefully england um, somewhere it's somewhere yeah. I, ideally i'd like to end up in falmouth that would falmouth. be the amazing okay. one wouldn't and it in what May, sort of well, it's obviously setting off mid May, so mid June, July, mid August, June, July, August, sometime, July, okay. August, September, uh, July, August time, sorry. So August 2023, Falmouth, you'll be sailing, sailing up the Carrick Road. <laughs> there we go. All right. And then desperate to get out and yeah. probably to have a cup of tea. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.